All right, I am going to show you a technique that you can use while you're watercolor painting that is called wet on wet technique. So for this technique, you are going to use, I'm actually going to use two different brushes. You don't have to use that, but since in class there's often many people sharing the water. Um, we're going to do it this way just to make it a little easier so that people don't accidentally ruin each other's artwork. So I have one water that has a big thick brush in it and this one I am not going to put any paint in. So this water should stay clear the entire time I'm working. And this one I have my skinnier brush in and this one is the one I'll use when I have paint on my brush. That way we'll have one clean water all the time and then one for our paint. And I have my tray of paint right here. So what I'm going to do first, it's called wet on wet. So the first thing I need to do is get my paper wet. So I'm going to use this big brush for the, with the clear water in it. And I'm going to just paint water on my paper. I'm not going to put any paint on it. I'm just painting water on it. And I want it to be nice and covered smoothly, the whole thing covered in water. And it's still shiny and wet. And I need to work a little bit quickly because I don't want it all to dry out. So I have it, and you can see how it's starting to curl a little bit. That's normal. If it curls too much, you can actually put some water on the back of your paper. And that'll help it curl the other way because it's curling because of the moisture from the water. So I've got lots of water on here. And then I'm going to take my other brush, the one I'm using for paint, and I'm going to get lots of paint on my brush. Lots of paint. I don't need much water on this brush. I just need lots of paint. So I have enough water that I can get the paint going. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to actually just touch my brush to the water. And you can see how the paint kind of spreads around because the water is already on the paper. And you can kind of dab it and see how it spreads. And I want even more paint because it's not spreading quite as much as I want. So I'm going to add some more to it. And I can kind of dab around. If it's not spreading enough, you can add more water with your other brush. And you can kind of help it spread around. It's going to give it kind of a tie-dye effect. One thing you have to be careful about when you're doing this, if you have a picture that you already painted on it, you need to be very careful that you do not drip onto the part you already painted. And that's going to be the trickiest part, is making sure that you don't get so much water that it drips onto those parts. And one really w easy way to do, um, to make sure that doesn't happen, and or to help it not happen, is to not paint any water on those parts so make sure that the other part is completely dry before you start trying this technique. So if I want to I can um, keep going and adding some more. I like this but I think that it needs a little bit more in there. It's a little bit too white. So I'm going to keep adding some more to it more paint in different areas. Right now I'm just adding paint. I'm not adding any more water to it. But I can go back in and add more water again too to help it spread around more. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. Add some more water on there. Help it spread around some more. And if you want to, with wet on wet, you don't have to just dab. You can actually um, draw like lines or something. But the wet on wet technique is going to make it so that the paint kind of spreads around a little more. So it doesn't have those clean, crisp edges like you have otherwise. So 
you can kind of play with it a little bit and it'll move the paint around because you have all that water on your paper. So you can kind of design with the water itself. So that is your wet on wet technique. Basically you wet the paper first and then you use a wet brush to add to it.